talent of the day, I'm going to share with you about the infrastructure design challenges and the way the open stack has to add their work operations. Before I start, I want to mention that originally uh, my colleague, um, Hiro Kalino, uh, and I planned this session to get about the portion of the majority of the presentation last month, which is personally working so I'll just go through all of that with myself. So, yeah, well, I'm not to get started. Um, again, my colleague Hiro Kalino, he is a senior software engineer at the LOI Corporation, already known as Climate Corporation, and he has been contributing to open that community for many years and he has a rich um, experience in uh, developing, operating um, private cloud uh, virtual console instead. Um, although he's not here today, but he um, made huge uh, efforts and contributions for the part of the company. So, yeah, and just about myself, my name is Sean Wong. I'm a computer, also from Roger. I'm also a software software engineer at the White Cop, working on the same team, focusing on private cloud uh, based on open stack. And uh, I'm also going to contribute to the development of HP driver of automatization. Um, for those of you who are curious, um, the background, the castle in the background, is the also awesome I got the uh, aspect of so many times. Um, so, uh, today's agenda. Uh, firstly, we'll talk about, we'll talk about a brief introduction to our services in Private Cloud, and as well as our commitment to high reliability and availability. And then we'll talk about the multi region, multi entity architecture we have, and why it was so important to us. And finally, we'll also talk about the work we have done with the entity. To ensure um, so, um, introduction to our service in America. So, you might wonder, you might uh, have not heard of the name AOI Corporation. I might wonder what we do exactly, but you do not have heard the line as a um, corporation and uh, the yeah, Japan. So, line is a famous um, communication app. Uh, popular in Japan, provides all kinds of like uh, video calls, messages, and uh, for uh, Yahoo Japan, it's also by uh, um, internet provider for all kinds of services like search, news, weather, shopping. So the private call we are going to talk about is where the live communication app is run on. Okay, so the private cloud we have online services called Verda. It provides all kinds of um, computing products and services. Some of them are here. Um, it covers uh, three of uh, the layers, the categories, platform as a service, management service, and management service. So in ten terms of scales, uh, currently um, in total we have uh, more than 74,000 uh, physical servers um, in, in the peak time, the user traffic can reach to 3 terabits per second. And in particular, we have more than 46,000 bare metal servers, 15,000 hypervisors, and more than 120,000 virtual machines. Okay, so our commitment to high reliability and availability. Uh, essentially, we have uh, four key items, user advanced technology, continuous service provision, OSS contribution, and expertise. So in this session, we'll particularly focus on the last one, which is redundancy and error mechanism for the infrastructures. Um, we're trying to implement redundancy at different levels to ensure that if one component fails, a third component can take over the same list. Um, so, infrastructure design. Um, at AOI Corporations, the overall um, infrastructure, particularly for the former line services, is based on uh, multi-region, multi-AZ availability zone. 
configuration is set up in house reliability and availability by distributing resources across different uh, geographic locations and other zones. As you can see in the background, there are multiple regions and regions have multiple availability zones. Um, yeah, so again, this architecture ensures if one region or availability zone experience a failure, uh, then the others can make operations and minimize the service. So, in particular, um, at the LY Corporation, we covered that we mainly have uh, two regions, Tokyo and Osaka. As you might know, Japan is a country where a natural disaster, uh, disaster happens a lot. There are uh, high floods are very heavy frequently. So, these two regions are strategically selected to provide uh, no time uh, they allowed us to recommend the regional incident ensure that service is available to all the users in the given case of the installation. Okay, let's take a closer look at Tokyo region specifically. Um, in Tokyo, we have uh, three availability zones. So each availability zone uh, is based in a different data center and they all independently with its own power, cooling, networking, um, preventing single point of view. Um, and this setup also allows for efficient work, uh, efficient load balancing and the rapid over ensuring op optimal performance and quick recovery in patients. And what's more, um, early uh, in June this year, we released a uh, new region in Kyushu. Um, some of them might know Kyushu is in the very south of Japan. And this allows us to further uh, enhance the redundancies and uh, you know, enhance our disaster recovery um, uh, capabilities ensuring robust and available account services. Um, yeah, so we just had a quick talk about uh, our multi region multi multi architecture. So, um, then you might wonder why this is so important. Um, as you might know, um, multi AC multi region, uh, by having these features, um, this is three points called isolations by distributing resources or both multiple availability zones, we can have uh, isolated fast and specific zones preventing single point failures from attacking the entire service. Also, we enhance the resilience. In case one upgradeability zone experience a failure, the remaining upgradeability zone can continue operating. Therefore, providing high availability and continuity of the service. And finally, low distributions. Um, so you can spread, uh, spread the load across different zones, ensuring optimal resource utilization and avoid, avoiding overloading and single So how do we uh, exactly implement this? All right, so we have uh, the major uh, forces we have now. The first is to distribute the control, uh, control plane of our open stack services across multiple ACs. Um, as you can see this Easy. We have a complete set of things and services running independently without help of any other entities. At the same time, um, those services are connected with some RPC messaging platforms. And in front of each, uh, in front of OpenSense services, we also have something called IOP for API uh, that provides the balancing for us. Easy aware of the services, um, which are, I'll introduce more on the data. So, of course, this is achieved by Kubernetes integrations. We have a single Kubernetes cluster distributed to multiple APs. Um, so, in each AC, we have a Kubernetes worker where the same plane services are running off. So, yes, software load balancer, um, is also what we call. LB for APIs. So LB for APIs provides load balancing for easy aware for the service API. It serves as an entry point for 
the open second proteins, for example, um, and trigger the close molecular things um, to provide some virtual IP using IP cast. So when users access further APIs, they connect to the users LPs for APIs, instance, via VIP, so this ensures efficient rally and low latency. So finally, um, as you might know already, for the backend of open stable, we go um, like some database system MI scale ready in cache D uh, required and these are really critical. So we also apply this multi agent multi region uh, setup for uh, the backend services. Um, so guarantee that if one of you to the service they say my scale goes down, the remaining is services. Um, yeah, so at bottom, we have one source in the one, and all the other tab is the two, and the two. Um, yeah, not only that, let's um, say it's not like um, just on an AZ level, we also implement the same uh, uh, mechanism on the region level. So um, we have a replication without my school distribution between two regions, Osaka and uh, Tokyo, for the exact uh, recovery uh, purposes. Um, yeah, so this two Graphic distribution is achieved through MySQL's advanced replication techniques, ensuring data consistency and the high availability across both regions. So we just talked about the um, the multi AZ multi regional architecture we have and how we exactly implement it. Um, but now let's uh, look take a closer look. At Within one AZ, there's some work we have done for high availability for So specifically, I'll talk about the anti-affinity and soft anti-affinity policies for failure domains. So as you might know, for some of you working on the open second alpha, you know there's a anti-affinity and soft anti-affinity policies of server code. Um, so these policies are used to distribute instance across different hosts to enhance uh, port tolerance and availability by preventing instance of configuration. So um, what is different between these two policies is that uh, and the ability is strictly enforced in the distribution, meaning that if you um, if the ability criteria are not satisfied, no other race errors, for example. Uh, on the other side, um, soft anti-affinity is best efforts. We will try to distribute instance across different hosts as much as possible, but if it's not feasible doing that, then um, it will just uh, remain as it is. So these two policies are implemented by the following components in NOLA scheduler, server group anti filters, and server group uh, soft antiquity weighers. Uh, however, um, you know, for most cases, these two policies or the way these weighers are very useful, but there's some limitations um, because these policies can only be applied on a per host basis. So, therefore, um, to achieve high availability, we want to extend these features by applying anti affinity and soft antiquity policies at a larger scale for HRHA uh, processes, and then that's why we'll try to ensure the scaling errors. So in cloud computing, a failure domain generally refers to a set of components such as servers, rack, data centers, that can fail together due to a single point of failure, such as power, outage, network failures, and other issues. And simply in our context here, uh, it just refers to a group of hosts or hypervisors that can fail together within uh, availability zone. So, example is that um, 
a rack of a home that's powered by a single power series of the unit. Um, say, for example, host one, two, three, they're connected to uh, power unit one. And if power unit one fails, all the three hypervisors are going to fail together. So we call it um, fuelism. And we realize this concept in open Scanola by using host aggregates. Um, with some special properties, like for example, um, we can create a group of host as an aggregate with the property field of equals true. Okay. So now, with unit domain defined, we can implement a new Nova scheduler filter and layers that operate on filler domains instead of individual hosts. Um, for our case, we implement say, uh, two uh, filters and waiters, the filter domain and filter filters and filter domain soft and waiters. Um, these new filters and waiters uh, does not only work on uh, instance scheduling, instance creation, but also in all other operations that need scheduling, such as resizing, code migrations, and line migrations. So um, I'm going to give a very simple example, like this one. Say you, have, you want to create two instances with the um, anti-affinity policies. So if instance A is scheduled to junior domain 1, um, where the uh, power junior 1 is, then the instance B must be scheduled to uh, host that connected to PDU2, which <coughs> would be four, five, six. Otherwise, the scheduling will, will happen from all the scheduling. And another case, um, say if you have a two instance uh, already, um, if A is scheduled on host one, which is in period only one, and host uh, instead B is scheduled on host four, which is period only one. Two, then we want to live migrate instance B from host four to host two. This is uh, impossible because um, you know if we migrate to host two, then host two is on the same filter domain of host four. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, because host two is on the same filter of host one. Then this, because we have this anti filter policy, then uh, scheduling surely error will happen. Following more, uh, so actually um, the example I show you um, is the, the real use case. Uh, what we have here at the work operations, um, we define um, filter domain based on a power unit. Um, refers to a rack of hypervisors, but actually the more complicated scenario we can even apply this idea um, to. You know, for different scales and purposes, at the same time, we can define different kinds of building domains. For example, um, network building domains, like hosts across different network switches or segments, and the storage building domains, um, we can define a group of hypervisor across different storage area, and that is to, to prevent data loss. So, yeah, so really, it depends on your own needs. Um, this idea can become applied and complicated. Um, so yes, um, what's more, these filter domains, so if you define different types of filter domains, and so different scales, these filter domains can be targeted and even overlap in terms of host. So this means a uh, single host could be on to multiple filter domains allowing for more flexible approach to optimize availability. And that after recovery. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much what I have today. So we have a brief introduction about the private cloud, the services we have, and how we approach uh, the high availability and reliability using multi region mutuality. And finally, we spend some time digging to the um, anti yes. policies and um, how we apply this uh, within every single available.
Um, yeah, so that's it.